It's a distinct pleasure again uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Brenda Milner to you. She's a friend of the University of Lethbridge for a long time. She's a graduate of the University of Lethbridge. It's uh, true. We gave her a degree about 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> And it was the hardest one she ever had to get. Uh, <laughs> she had to get here. Um, there's a question that, of course, always arises when you're introducing people, and that is, who are they? And so I have here a, um, when it comes up, I realize it's all safe, but that's OK. Um, <laughs> uh, Brenda Miller. Um, one of the neat things about um, scientists is that they're relatively uh, innocuous. And there was a great Wizard of Id cartoon years ago in which the wizard was saying to the king, um, would, scientists are really underpaid. They should get paid more than athletes. And the king says, would you go watch a uh, scientist work? <laughs> and he says, good point. And well, shortly after that, I was in Vancouver, and I saw a bumper sticker. And it was the first bumper sticker I'd ever seen dedicated to a scientist, and it said, Stick it in your ear, McGear. And this was <laughs> uh, Patrick McGear, who was uh, Minister of Health uh, in BC at that time, and as is typical in BC, not popular for lots of reasons, one of which was using the health budget to build new tennis courts at the university, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, while I mentioned tennis courts, the Chancellor's here, and I should point out to her that those tennis courts stay where they are, uh, even though some people wanted to move. I've never met a scientist. <laughs> um, we won't see her life, but the initials are our tenant. Um, we rarely have scientists who have comic books dedicated to them. And this is one that um, I've managed to snag by various nefarious means. And it's actually, there's more to it than just this little bit. And uh, perhaps tomorrow at the center, I'll be able to show you more of the comic devoted to Brenda Miller. There's a little comic book as, as to who she is. But I can tell you uh, in shorter than, than the French comic book. Brenda um, was born in Manchester, um, which I've learned from her was, is the radiant place in the world. And so when there In England. Well, <laughs> um, and in 1944 or so, uh, she moved to Canada um, because her husband was working on a secret project then the war, and so he was working in, I guess, probably Chalk River, right? Yes, at first at the U of M and then Chalk River. Yeah. And so Brenda was hired at the University of Montreal as an uh, instructor of psychology, and she likes to point out, including rat psychology, um, lecturing course in French. And at the end of the war, um, and shortly thereafter, she um, was looking around for other things to do, and Peter Milner had decided to do a PhD. I guess you decided first. Brenda decided I had decided first, yeah. To do a PhD with uh, Donald Hebb, who at the time was establishing Canadian and actually North American psychology uh, in, a new, in a new direction, but Canadian psychology in particular. And so Brenda was one of his first PhD students um, at McGill. And she um, had the fortune of spending time early, in the early days with many distinguished people, including Henri Lacan, who was one of the starters of neuropsychology in Europe, but of course also Walter Penfield, and, um, and also the crew that, that eventually ended up at McGill and at the Neuro, the Montreal Neurological Institute. Um, I first met Brenda, um, I was figuring out more than 30 years ago, which is a bit scary, a lifetime for most of you in this room. And I remember being, two years ago, Brenda and I shared the honor of receiving awards from CPA, Canadian Psychological Association, and the Canadian Society for Brain Behavior and uh, Cognitive Science at Laval. And she won the award from one group and I from the other group. And I was sitting at the back of the room with Gus Craig, who is, many of you know, is a very distinguished Canadian psychologist in his own right. And he turns to me and he says, you and I are probably the only ones in this room who were born when she started psychology. And that's probably, <laughs> was probably looked around and I said, my God, that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I had the pleasure um, and the uh, luck of spending time with Brenda uh, doing the postdoctoral fellowship a long time ago uh, before coming here. Now, I'm not the only person in this room who has been trained by Brenda Milner. Also, 
Um, Ingrid Dawson, whose name I suspect you won't recall, uh, was a nurse at the Neuro um, in the 60s. And there she is there, waiting. <laughs> and she's asked me to give you this card. Um, you don't have to open the second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce Brenda for another reason, and that is, aside from being one of my closest friends, uh, and actually someone who had a big influence on me, and I have to say on, on Wishaw as well, even though he resisted it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> she once described Rob as being that woolly one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I whether that's accurate or not. Um, Brenda is an order um, of Canada, and so those of you who don't know, this little pin that she has on, if you see people with that little pin, they're big shots. And, and <laughs> It works with Air Canada, usually. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we asked the graduate students, or Rob actually told the graduate students, they'd be allowed to uh, invite anyone in the world that they wanted that we could afford and who would come to celebrate the fact that we have a, a PhD program up and running. And they chose Brenda, and I, I've told Brenda this, I just went, my God, why did you do that? <laughs> why did you do this to me? And they said, well, What's it got to do with you? And I said nothing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm delighted that she's here. And I know we all are delighted that she's here. And um, we um, are going to have a, a talk that's, we talked about what the talks could be. You better go off. Um, and that's probably the wrong one. Too many choices. Um, and, and so, I said, well, how about frontal lobes? Well, no, it can't be frontal lobes. Really. And so we ended up deciding on temporal lobes, revisited. And the key thing here is that uh, Brenda was the first person who actually drew attention to the role of the temporal lobes, uh, first modern person who drew attention to the role of temporal lobes in memory. And obviously, he's been doing this for over 50 years. And so, uh, with no further ado, uh, I'll introduce Brenda and thank her, Preston. Well, I'm trying. Um, oh, what's happening? What are, you, what are you trying to do? Turn off the screen so we don't have that buggy. <laughs> Margaret, you're the expert here. Hmm. That would be the wrong word. <laughs> No, it's this, it's this room, it's a pain in the butt because it's up high. Yes, it's bad having everything up high. I can't get it. Well, we decided to cancel the talk. <laughs> Playing with the secret uh, machine. Oh, is it, so, it's okay now, you yes. think? Until I start, we'll see. So, 